All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Why don't we open up with a word of prayer? God, we love you, and we thank you for this day. Uh, we ask you, Lord, to encourage us through your word and uh, help us, Lord, to be good stewards of the gift of this day that you have given us. Uh, let us do everything we can to bring you glory and to make a difference with our lives. We thank you for uh, the opportunity to start the day off uh, with brothers and sisters in Christ and to open up your word together. Encourage us now, we pray in your name. Amen. All right, so we're, we're week three into our study on Gideon. Last week, we really didn't talk much about Gideon. We talked more about uh, uh, just sort of the situation that, that they were in as, as they were uh, being attacked. Um, and, and really, really, uh, uh, just the hard times that the nation was, was facing. And, and today, we bring Gideon back into the picture as we see um, God sort of calling him into a, into a place of action. And I want to sort of set this up by reminding you that uh, for each of our lives, God has a unique calling. Uh, and, and sometimes it's, it's really easy for us to, to look at God's calling as something that, that others might experience or that, that um, someone else might follow and, and just look at our, our own lives and say maybe we're, um, you know, we're not special enough to be called by God to some unique purpose uh, but, but the reality for each and every one of us is, is that you are called by God. And only you can do what God has called you to do. You are important. And the calling of God on your life um, is, is very important. Uh, so we start in Judges uh, 6 verse 11 today. And uh, I know we read all of these verses when we, when we started out in week one of this, so I'm going to try to not, um, not read all of them, but let's start and read the first two. The angel of the Lord came and sat down uh, under an oak tree in Oprah and, and, or that belonged to Joash, the, uh, man, a B, uh, yeah. Where his son Gideon, here, here's the part I wanted you to see in that. Um, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Now, that's, when, you, when you read commentaries and, and things on this, you will see that um, it appears that this is sort of a unique situation, right? Because most of the time... Um, most of the time when, when a person uh, would, would thresh wheat, it would be outside, right? It would be outside so that the wind could blow away the chaff. And we, we read about that in other places in the Bible. And we know that's even today in agriculture just sort of a part of the process. Um, but, but in this day, certainly, um, most likely, it would have it would have been the the normal practice to do this outside, but because because of the um, invasion of the Midianites, there was like this fear, right? And so even this act of of threshing the wheat, uh, we can just sort of assume, which I know is a dangerous thing to do, but we can assume that. Uh, Gideon was afraid if the Midianites saw what he was doing, as we have already read about in previous verses, that they would come in and they would get all of the crops and all of the good things from, from uh, the people and just burn the rest. And so Gideon's like trying to hide out uh, and, and doing this, uh, this process of threshing the wheat sort of in a hideout. So he's... Um, I wouldn't say necessarily in a cowardly position, but certainly he's, he's hidden away, right? And, and so it makes it even more awesome, this next verse for me. Uh, so when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior, who is hiding out in a cowardly fashion from the Midianites threshing wheat. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, 
it doesn't, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that Gideon within himself was not feeling the strength of a mighty warrior, right? Gideon was not feeling that on his, on his life. Uh, in fact, we'll read some verses in a moment that even lets us, or that confirms that. Uh, but the very fact that he's, he's hidden away because he's scared that, that the Midianites are going to see him and, and take this crop from him, uh, says this guy, this guy didn't feel like the mighty warrior that God was calling out upon him uh, that day. Now I have a question for you, um, uh, and I know I've given some responses here, but without looking at those responses, um, I want to ask you, do you know who you really are? Like, do you know who you really are? Um, because sometimes I think we, we find ourselves in similar places to, to Gideon when, especially when we're encountering hard times, it's easy for us to maybe um, shrink back from a position of, of the knowledge of, of who we are in Christ and maybe uh, revert to, to, to some character trait that is not the mighty warrior that God has called out in us. Uh, and, and maybe, perhaps, you're at one of those places or in one of those seasons in your life where you, you maybe are having an identity crisis and you really don't know who you are. Um, let me just give you a few reminders that are general to all of us who would be followers of Christ today of who the Bible says we are and promises that God has spoken over our lives. Now, even, in, even with these in mind, I want to remind you that there is an individual calling upon your life that is unique to you. God loves you so much that He says, I have a special design for you, a special calling for you. But for all of us that are born-again believers, uh, we, we are children of God. Like, you are God's child. Um, John 1 tells us that, right? You are God's child. How awesome is that? Um, but John 15 even goes further and tells us we are, we are a friend of God. We are His friend. That's awesome. Right? I, I thought about having Amu get up here and do a little Israel. I'm a friend of God, right? I, w I know it's easy to say in a cliche-ish kind of way, but how amazing is that? That God considers us friend. Um, we are His masterpiece. You are His masterpiece. Look, look straight ahead and pretend there's a mirror in front of you. Uh, if you're from the South, it's a mirror. If you're from other places, a mirror, right? Those who say it wrong, mirror, mirror. It's a mirror, mirror, right? Look, look, pretend there's a mirror and just look at yourself in admiration and say, girl, you a masterpiece. If you're a guy, obviously say guy, right? Uh, you're a masterpiece. Uh, you don't believe it. Ephesians 2 has, has spoken that over you. For we are God's handiwork. We are His masterpiece, crafted in His image. For you to see yourself as anything but a masterpiece in Christ says that you believe God could make substandard stuff. And that's not the God we serve. We are justified in Him. According to, according to Romans 5, we are justified in Him. Uh, wow, for all of us who have, who have done terrible things in life to know that our sins are justified through Christ Jesus. Like, that is, a, that is amazing. Uh, we are freed from condemnation in Him. We are adopted into His family. We are citizens of heaven. We belong to God. And we are in a place that we can never be separated from His love. Um, so, so again, I, I tell you those most elementary things uh, of the faith because I think they're the things during hard times that we often drift away from. Like when things are hard, just like Gideon is, is hiding away in the, in the wine press threshing wheat, 
um, doesn't see himself as a mighty warrior because these Midianites are invading them and just having their way with his people, when times are hard for us, it's the easiest time to not see ourselves in the light of who we are as God's creation. And so I want to remind you of those very, very simple things. Uh, in hard times, it's easy to forget who we are. So let's, let's look at these, these next verses, um, starting in verse 14. Um, after being called a mighty warrior, Gideon, Gideon questions God. Um, and, and I think it's a very honest question, but it's also a very telling question of, of where Gideon was during, during this time. And I love the way he does it. Pardon me, Lord, Gideon replied. Could you imagine? Pardon me, God. Like, um, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Again, I go back to a thought uh, from, from a couple of weeks ago that in, in hard times, it is so easy for us to see that as an absence of God or we have somehow stepped out of God's will. We could not be in the center of God's will if bad things are happening to us. That's many times the way we, we think. There's no way I'm in God's will. And, and sometimes people will make rash decisions because some negative set of circumstances happen and they're like, well, I can't be in the will of God if bad things are happening, so I need to, I need to go in a different direction. Sometimes when hard times, are, when you're in the midst of hard times, it means that you are right in the middle of God's will. Think about it. There's nothing more the devil would like than to see you be in tune with God and be following His will. So he will always, he will always try to do whatever he can uh, to sway us from being in, in the will of the Lord. Uh, pardon me, if, if the Lord is with us, why is all this happening? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did the Lord not bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us to the hands of the, of the Midianites. The Lord has abandoned us. Uh, again, I remind you that when we are in hard times, it is so easy to forget who we are in Christ or where God has brought us from. Um, I, I think about so many times like, where, where was I before Jesus got a hold of my life? Like, and, and I think about the miracle that was that God came in and changed the trajectory of my life because if I would have continued on that road, I don't know where I would be, what jail I would be in, but it wouldn't be a good place, right? It wouldn't be a good place. And think about the miracle of, of God and His salvation in your life. Where were you when Jesus saved you by His grace and by His mercy. Think of the miracle. Think of what God saved you from, what He brought you out from, right? Now, now sometimes we approach our circumstances and, and we think that somehow the, the God that was on the throne then that did such an amazing miracle to save us from our sins, to save us from the, the trajectory that was carrying us to death, Right? He saved us from that. We now think that He is somehow not powerful enough, not great enough to get us through these present hard times. But He's the same God now. Gideon was saying, where are you? You did this. You did this back then, but where are you now? Well, the truth is He's the same God and He was on the throne for Gideon the same way He was for Moses and the people of Israel in the time of Moses. Then in verse 14, um, like the Lord sort of sort of turns to Gideon. He looks him, he looks him in the eye, and, and, and through this angel of the Lord, he says, Now go in the strength that you have and deliver us from the power of Midian. Am I not sending you? And 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 Gideon 
still sort of, I'm, I'm sure, doing the math in, in, his, in his mind, right? You can, you can see the, the, the calculations moving here. Um, this, this doesn't seem like a positive equation here. Like me against the Midianites just doesn't seem like it's going to work. I, and he begins to give God all these reasons. I'm the weakest in my clan. Like I'm, the, I'm, I'm like the least qualified person to do what you're saying. I have no, no authority to call out the Calvary of Israel to come and respond and to, to fight the Midianites. Um, how, is, how is this even possible? And here's the crux of this conversation. Uh, this is where God and, uh, confirms His calling on Gideon. And, and, and coincidentally, this is how God confirms His calling in our life. Um, in verse 16, He says this, Gideon, I, I see all the reasons you can't do this. I see you're the weakest. I see you don't have the authority. I see that the, that the uh, Midianites seem so much more powerful. But here's the deal. I will be with you, and you will strike Midian down as if it were just one man. So God, and get this, um, God always confirms His calling with His presence. God always confirms His calling with His presence. How do I know you've called me? Look at everything that's going on around you. Here's how you know. Because I'm with you. Remember what Jesus said? Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm going to heaven, but remember, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Right? And even when Jesus ascended into heaven, He said, God's Spirit is coming to be with you. Like, I am God, I am God uh, here on this earth walking, walking with you now. I'm going away. It feels like a big loss, but it's going to be better because now you will have God with you and God in you through His Holy Spirit. G Gideon, Gideon, just as you are, was given an undeniable calling. Gideon, it might not, might not seem like you're the right person, but you are the one I am calling to save the Israelites from the hands of the Midianites. Uh, Gideon was even told the results in advance. Wouldn't you love if God would give you that, that privilege, right? Here's how this is all going to work out. Gideon was told how it was all going to work out. Right? Coincidentally, we've been told too. It's hard to receive it sometimes because we're in the midst of difficulty. It's hard to see the truth of what God has already spoken over us, that I will cause all things to work together for your good if you love me and are called according to my purpose. He's already told us in advance. It might not end the way we wanted it to, but He's going to turn it for good. He's going to cause it to work out for good. He's given us that promise. He's given us that promise in advance, just like He did for Gideon. And Gideon, most importantly, just like us, was promised the partnership of the Lord Himself. He was promised. Like, that's not just a partnership, that's an unrivaled partnership. Like, someone, someone once said, you know, God plus, God plus me, or one plus God equals... Well, I'm messing that up. I don't even remember what it says, right? But, uh, God plus one equals a majority, right? Or something like that, all right? Um, here's, here's what we know. If God is for us, who can be against us? Right? Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. Like, God has a calling upon our life and we're going to go through some hard times, but He has promised us as we do that He will never leave us or forsake us. We have an unrivaled partnership walking with us through these trials. I remember when our son passed away at the age of four. I, I, it, the deepest, darkest valley that, that we could ever walk through, no doubt. And I remember someone saying to me, I just don't know 
how you're making it. I just don't know how you did it. You know what? There's no explanation. When you look at someone, you can't say, uh, well, it's easy. Because it's not, right? But here's what you, you can say with great confidence. You know what? There's no way you make it through a set of circumstances like this unless, unless you have the hand of the Lord holding you along the way. Because He gives us a peace we can't understand. In fact, it goes beyond our ability to understand. It's what the Word says, right? We can't explain it because we can't even understand it. All we know that is if we are in Christ, when hard times comes, we have a peace, a confidence, a hope, and a faith that goes beyond our ability to understand. And there is no mountain that can be before us. There is no depth that can consume us. There is no fire that can burn us when Christ is with us. It is an unrivaled partnership that allows us to hold our head up in the darkest of valleys in the hardest of times and says, I know who I am in Christ. And though everyone fight against me, though the circumstances consume me, I will not be consumed because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now I want to challenge you with this as we close. It was said among Napoleon soldiers, when Napoleon takes our hands and looks at us, we feel like conquerors. I believe that there is something that changes in us even in life's hardest times when we listen to the voice of the Lord and when we feel His presence with us. In fact, the Bible says it this way in Psalm 1611, in His presence, Remember, His presence is the confirmation of our, of our calling. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. Psalm 1611. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. Nehemiah reminds us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if in His presence, there's joy... And if His joy is what gives us strength, perhaps the answer to the, to the difficulty you're having right now, are you getting through the difficulty? Are you getting through the hard time? Is merely just getting in His presence. Letting your calling be confirmed once again as you stand in His presence. Being consumed by the joy that is found in His presence and allowing that joy to bring you strength to go on another day. So I challenge you today, this week, find time, find time to just get in His presence until you feel that joy consume your life once again. Let's pray. God, we love You. We thank You for this day and we ask You, Lord, to help us to remember the unrivaled partnership we have in You. Let us, let us be consumed with Your presence that will bring joy and strength to our life no matter how hard the situation might be. We love You and we thank You for it in Your name. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day.